I'm Mark S. King, and this is my fabulous disease. Hi, it's Mark, and welcome to the United States Conference on AIDS, sponsored by the National Minority AIDS Council. This is an exciting time, a very visual time. Thank God I brought my camera. We've got a lot of work to do. This is going to be a rollicking review of the United States Conference on AIDS. So let's get going. women that I knew who actually caught pneumonia and quickly within five to ten days, you know, like just disappeared. Yeah, you know, I like, learned um, personally for me to find my own mentorship, to run my mouth as much as possible. <laughs> Our work was to get us to the point that we could stay alive. And I think we need to figure out how we can support younger people on how they can live. No, I, I like to joke that I have HIV antibodies older than you. <laughs> and what is it that we should be hearing from you? Where do I fit in in this picture? So um, particularly now um, compared to in the past and also because as a minority, um, I feel as if it, it is important for me to have my voice heard. Are older gay men who went through what we went through being a little hard on the younger generation? Are we older guys raking a, shaking a rake on the lawn saying, you know, in my day, those who have continued fighting AIDS and have remained AIDS activists and have remained engaged and are trying to really struggle to figure out how to prevent new infections in young gay men, I think we've been on a learning curve and realized that standing on the lawn with a rake doesn't get you anywhere um, and, and that the crisis has changed. I happen to notice that the people involved in Mr. Friendly seem to be men, members of the leather community. Often. I'm just saying. Not all. Like not there's all. definitely some guys who are not, you yeah. know. What's your mission? To reduce the stigma of HIV one conversation at a time. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we want to put on events that are really uh, engaging people that are not at all fear-based. And you're with the female condom company. Yes, You female manufacture the female condoms. Yes, SD2. Well, you might know that in a recent episode of my series, The Real Paws Guys of Atlanta, yes. my good friend Antron was oh, talking yeah. about how much he loved the female condoms. Yes. It's just about, basically, for me, empowerment for me, mm -hmm. um, knowing that I'm going to protect myself and so I can put this in myself. And guess what? Yes? I would like to introduce you oh, to your biggest fan. <laughs> What's up? How are you? I'm good. So nice to meet you. Likewise. I love the episode. It was fantastic. And Thank I just you. want you to know that I'm your biggest fan because I feel like I have so much more control and I feel so much more comfortable. She can't talk about it being used by men because it's not FDA approved for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have some news on that front. I do. Uh, the National Female Condom Coalition is currently um, advocating with the FDA in order to find out what they need to do in order to get it approved for anal sex. Both female condoms and male condoms, because male condoms aren't approved for anal sex either. Well, I just love to bring people together. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel so, <laughs> so Thank good you. to meet you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Mom, look what I won in the raffle. <laughs> the main reason I love this campaign is because it, it brings positive and negative together and says we have this shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. Clearly, kind of articulating the role that people play, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, as Maya Angelou says, you know, you start there, and this campaign is a jumping out place. The Positively Aware newsletter is really the last of its kind. Well, we're a treatment publication, so that's what we're focused on, is the information that people need to stay alive and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. You also have a really great uh, campaign coming up. The idea is that whether you're positive or negative, we're all affected by HIV and its stigma. So we want everybody everywhere to take a picture on September 21st and uh, submit it to us 
share a moment of your life, mm -hmm. share your story, and submit it um, to our site, adaywithhiv.com. You'll be able to upload your picture starting on the 21st. It's the story behind the image that really gives these, these pictures power. Everywhere I look, I see stigma, 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 stigma. You know, I see in all of these booths, you know, the, the stigma project, and yep. everybody's addressing stigma. I, I do think that there is a, an understanding that's coming to, to, to the fore, uh, that it is more important than just a word, that it's something that needs to be addressed. And part of addressing it is talking about it. How, how difficult is it uh, on a monthly basis to keep this issue vital and important and engaging for, for your readers? It's not easy. Humans are fickle. And, uh, and so it's very difficult to kind of go back to the well, keep talking about certain things that need to be discussed. Mm -hmm. But that's our job. The Pause 100 for the December issue uh, is going to be brand new. Uh, the concept behind it is celebrating unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. And so we're going around talking to people in the community. And hopefully, we'll be bringing stories of 100 people in the community that um, formerly hadn't been receiving the attention that they deserve. So are you part of a crew? Yeah, I'm, I'm a part of the Apache Hunters, Mardi Gras Indians. We parade on Mardi Gras. It's the first time we, we reveal our new costumes. Oh, so it's you have on a new Mardi costume Gras. every year? Yeah, every year. Now, do you have a lot of space in your garage? There are seven of us working at my agency. Mm -hmm. We cover 7,000 square miles. Sometimes it feels like you're beating your head against the wall. Yeah. But maybe it's making a difference. I hope this conference helps kind of recharge you. Every time I come, something happens, whether it's a poem that's read at a plenary or whether it's a speaker that I meet or something. Something always happens to remind me about why I'm doing it every time. It's all about that, that idea of neutrality, mm -hmm. of, uh, bringing, of the whole bringing positive people and negative people together, and even getting negative people to really kind of step up because, let's face it, most of them are doing most of the stigmatizing. Um, there is obviously the, some stigmatizing among positive, but it's mainly negative people who are causing it, and it's, and it's something that we need to, there's this kind of integration that we need to cause, because mm -hmm. there's been so much segregation among, among the different statuses. Well, we found that uh, these men were really knowledgeable about HIV AIDS, how it is transmitted, how it is not transmitted, and we also found that 54% um, report never engaging in unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. I always say it's never the tool, it's never the environment, it's the intention. If you want to find trouble, you find troubles wherever you go. When people are on applications, uh, cell phones and smartphones, it's somebody who is connecting with somebody they don't know, and they're most likely going to a place that isn't safe. Uh, the difference between that and an actual bathhouse is that minimally they actually offer a safe place where people can meet, Often there's outreach that's available and at least uh, some 
minor amount of uh, intervention, you know, tools like condoms, lube, and to prevent these, by HIV. the way, for if they don't know, are are, are lubricants. Uh, yeah. type products that can kill HIV. You could use this with condoms, mm -hmm. but we really see it as something that for people who have already chosen not to use condoms, mm -hmm. here is a way to provide protection. So we're a ways away, mm -hmm. but we're in the testing and we're the field is moving forward. So it's very exciting times right this very moment. When I think of criminalization, I think of my community and people not disclosing their status and being criminalized for it. But sex workers have all sorts of other criminalization issues. When people are afraid of arrest, they're less likely to carry condoms, that they're afraid will be used as evidence against them for prostitution. They're less likely to take time to negotiate with clients and be explicit about negotiating with clients because they're scared of either taking that time and getting arrested or they're scared that they might be working with an undercover officer. ...become up criminal, whether it be from sex, drugs, I never see anyone who's HIV positive that's living it up, having fun, being shown as having like a responsible sex life. They're always shown as perpetuators of disease and like death. The HIV negative and the HIV positive person are both, you know, responsible for the decisions that they choose to make once they step into that bedroom. <laughs> I know that it's important with this campaign that you want to talk about the relationship between patients mm -hmm. and their doctors mm -hmm. and having that conversation. You know, I know I write down all my questions. We have a conversation checklist that people could download and write notes, but even better than that for people that are really much more technical and want to use their phone as they use many other applications and use the, an application called My Health Matters. One of the campaigns that you were involved in was the CDC testing makes us stronger. Yeah. And I've got to say, when you talk about power of the multitude of campaigns that I've done that is my absolute you know pride and joy mm -hmm. really kind of my art and creativity is really what saved my life these buses are positive signs and I've been uh, HIV positive for 10 years thank you for sharing so, so I, you know I feel a lot better Everybody has a voice and everybody can be an advocate, whether it's just for their own healthy life or for others. It, it, we really have to start working together and share our stories to really um, tackle this issue. I feel like this is a big family reunion. I feel like, you know, HIV is not an industry per se. It is obviously in some ways, but it's also a family. There are, there are, there are people who've been fighting this epidemic for years and years and years who only through our support of each other are we able to get through it. If we can inspire people to commit one more year of their life to fighting this epidemic, I feel like we've won.